Exercise 228, page 581, question number 7. This question is all about the equations of motion and the relationship between acceleration and the rate of change, as meaning the rate of change of velocity, to come up with actually one of the equations of motion which you might recognise. I'm going to um, go through a similar problem which, in a, in a way, uh, goes through the derivation of what we mean by velocity as the rate of change of displacement. So I'll look at that one and then you can go back and see if you can arrive at this particular equation of motion here from just the knowledge of the rate of change of velocity of a body meaning the acceleration. So let's look at this one here in a similar way to the question in the book we're defining what we mean by average velocity of something. The average velocity, v, let's call it, is given by the rate of change of displacement, s, with time. I didn't put um, s in here, but s is the displacement. So I can write that algebraically as this. v equals ds by dt. That's a differential equation because it's got a differential in it and it's got an equal sign. So what I want now is a formula for the displacement. So what I need to do is integrate both sides in this particular case. So V is my average velocity, what I'm after at the end, the value for the average velocity. So integrating both sides, so dS by dt equals V, Let's bring the dt over to the right-hand side, so ds equals v dt. So effectively now what I'm going to do is to integrate both sides as we've done before. Integrating 1 effectively with respect to s gives us just s, so that gives us our s. And integrating v with respect to t gives us vt, as v can be treated as a constant. So, that's my plus C. So that's my general solution. The displacement is the velocity times time, which you probably know, don't you? Plus some constant C. And if we look at my initial conditions, when T equals 0, S equals K here. So, putting in the initial conditions, when T equals 0, this disappears. And so... S equals K, so we've got K equals C. In other words, my constant of integration is K. So I can finally write S equals VT plus K, which I probably wouldn't have bothered to do. I could just as easily have left it at C. The important part about this, though, is what does K represent? What does K represent? It represents, if we look back at our initial conditions, the displacement when t equals 0. In other words, it takes into account the fact that at 0, when t equals 0, if we consider the movement of some body in this direction, then if this is our 0 displacement, and this is our displacement of, say, 10 metres, what we're saying is, when t equals 0, the start point of the object is not 0, it's some arbitrary position k. So when t equals 0, we are at that point, not at this point, not at the start, not at this point here. So that represents effectively the initial displacement. s equals vt plus k. The displacement from some position here equals the velocity of the object multiplied by the time plus whatever distance it had moved before we started our timer. Okay, now go back and have a think about this particular problem in the textbook. Not only from a mathematical point of view, but in, in, from the point of view of the physics, from the equation of motion, we understand where that comes from. Okay, I'll stop that there.